Hi, this is Michael, and this is my review of the Pedicare Pet Dryer. Now, this is a behemoth. This is 2,400 watts of drying power. That means you are going to need a 20 amp circuit to plug this into. 15 amp circuit, you're probably going to blow a fuse, so just be aware of that. Uh, 20 amps, 2400 watts of drying power with this machine. This is a substantial machine too. It's pretty heavy. Uh, it comes in several different configurations. I have mine on a stand mount, but they also market a wall mount. And you can also just use it straight on the floor, just this head unit here. Uh, there are four rubber pads, four substantial feet, and this will sit very well on the ground. Uh, if that's how you choose to use it. It comes with a very long hose, flexible hose, and the hose comes with three different tips. Uh, this is a round direct air tip. This is a very powerful flow. Then you have two wider tips that are gonna give you progressively more diffuse, uh, wider stream of air. So you can use whichever tip fits your need. Uh, the tips just come out. It's just a compression fit. There's no unscrewing or anything like that. It just slides right in. So pick the tip you need and you are good to go. Now they also provide a fixed arm. Uh, if you choose to use this, this could come in pretty handy if you are using a table to groom your pet and you want both your hands free. So you can unscrew the hose, screw the fixed arm in, and then you can adjust the angle of the flow airflow by uh, moving the nozzle like that. Now it's a little counterintuitive here. In order to unscrew the hose, you actually turn it clockwise. That's normally the direction we turn things to tighten them, but this is reversed. So in order to tighten the hose, you turn it counterclockwise in order to remove it clockwise. And the same holds true for the nozzle if you're using the fixed arm. Now the power cord is uh, long, it's about eight and a half feet long. It is a three prong plug, so there's that. And also the unit does have a display panel here and this um, shows you the mode, the plus minus button and the power button. So there's four buttons in addition to the display. When you first plug the unit in, the power indicator is flashing. That just means the power is coming to the unit, lets you know that it is plugged in, but it's not actually on right at the moment. The power button turns it on. The mode button switches between fan speed and temperature. And it's a little, well, it's not a little, it's very weird how this operates. Um, so I turn the button on, and it's in, by default, it'll be in the fan speed mode. So by pressing the plus button, the fan speed will increase. Now there's four different positions for the blinking indicator to be when you're in the fan speed mode. When you are first starting off, it's all the way to the left here. I push the button once and twice, that turns on the fan. Why do you have to push it twice? I have no idea but it's at the lowest speed right now. If I push it one more time, nothing happens, but the fan light blinks. I guess that's just reaffirming that I'm in fan speed mode. I don't really know. So I push the button twice. It goes to the second position, and we're at a higher speed. When I press it again, it goes to another speed, but it's still in the second position. Confused yet? When I push it again, it goes to the third position. Higher speed, it's still in the third position. Fourth position, highest speed. So each position has two speeds with the exception of the first position, which just has one fan speed. Try to make sense of that. It's just bizarre. All right, when we switch the mode button to now we're in the temperature mode, that um, indicator below the fan speed says 39 degrees centigrade right now. Uh, another quirk is you cannot change that to Fahrenheit. So it's always going to read centigrade. And um, this has actually eight positions. And guess what? 
you don't know what temperature will be at any of those positions. So as I press the plus button, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I have no idea what temperature it's going to end up at. It eventually shows you that the temperature is rising, but you don't really know what temperature is that you're setting the uh, unit to. So that again is very weird. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like that. Anyway, I have this set to, uh, I'm at position number five, and uh, right now the temperature is indicating 44 degrees centigrade. I'm gonna turn the mode to the fan and turn the fan on to a low setting. Now at a low setting, this is very, very quiet. And even uh, as you get it up a little bit, this is still a pretty quiet machine. Uh, certainly your hair dryer that you use for yourself is probably louder than this. But I'm getting a very, very strong So this does get pretty loud when it's at the highest speed, but I can't really imagine where you would need to use the highest speed for a very long period of time. Uh, it does have a lot of airflow, so you might be surprised how effective this is. Now on the back of the unit there is a filter that you will need to clean probably fairly frequently. Uh, this just unscrews and then the foam filter is right here and it just peels right off. You can rinse this in water, let it air dry and then put it back on, um, on the unit. So once it's dry, just get the knob and put it back in and screw this on. And there you have it. Now as far as the stand goes, this is a telescoping stand. So right now it's in a pretty high position, but you can actually turn the knob and uh, lower this. It's spring loaded. Now that can actually be dangerous because if you're not aware that it's spring loaded and uh, or somebody else wants to use it and they don't know it's spring loaded, they want to raise this motor up and they turn the knob, this is just going to shoot up. And that, if your head was over that, it could hit you in the face or something. So that could be a potentially a dangerous situation. So just be pretty careful that you always are having one hand on top of the unit to steady it and to prevent it from just shooting up on you. Again, this will rotate. You can change the angle of the motor. And um, you can also remove the motor completely from the stand if you want to use this just as a freestanding unit by itself. That, and to do that, you would need a hex wrench to remove the two hex bolts on either side of the machine. There's a very sturdy handle that you can use to lift this uh, when it's all by itself. You wouldn't use the handle when it's on the stand, but uh, uh, otherwise you could use the handle, and it's a pretty substantial handle. Overall, I think this is a very effective unit. Uh, in spite of its idiosyncrasies, it does seem to perform well. Uh, I'd really like to know what the thought process, though, was in designing the controls the way they are. Uh, it doesn't make much sense to me, but bottom line is it does a really good job. It's a powerful unit, and it seems like it should last quite a while. Now, to be honest, normally when I have a question about how something operates, I immediately, uh, as a reviewer, I immediately want to call the company and talk to them about it. Uh, I could not find a contact phone number for this company, Pedicare. And uh, I actually went to their website, which is listed in their user guide, and the website was non-functioning. It wasn't, wasn't up, basically. So I don't really know what that means. <laughs> kind of concerns me that I can't contact the company, and I do not know how responsive they would be to emails. And uh, so take that for what it's worth, but there it is. So that's about it. Um, this is the Pedicare Pet Dryer. And if you have any questions about it, leave me a comment. I'll try to answer it if I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day.